Arabia's longtime ruler, King Abdullah, dead at age 90. His half-brother, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Salman, uh, is taking over. He's assuming the throne shortly. He assumed the throne shortly after Abdullah's death. Let's bring in now Zudi Jassar. He's president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, also author of the book, Battle for the Soul of Islam. All right, Zudi, you're actually not shedding a tear for the king. A lot of people are saying America lost a big friend. You disagree? Well, you know, listen, I, I look at this as a reformer, as somebody who wants to see the transformation of the towards liberty and freedom. And those are not words that are uttered by this family. And, you know, the new king will be the same as the old king. And ultimately, uh, the, the, the sad thing is that kings may die mercifully, but uh, daily, if not weekly, there are liberals who are trying to reform Islam to stop the radicalization. This may be an ally, but the al-Qaeda, King Abdullah, oversaw a country that, that created the radical ideas of al-Qaeda that attacked us on 9-11, that attacked us at Fort Hood, continued to attack Paris, on and on. And I really don't see any moral difference between the terrorists in Paris and the House of Saud and their family who, who weekly torture and imprison Muslims because of blasphemy and other laws they have in that government that prevent reform necessary for true right. moder moder modernization. You know, I mean, uh, just I think it was last week uh, across the Internet, I even looked at the, uh, the beheading, I think, of a Burmese woman in Saudi Arabia. The beheading wasn't illegal. Actually, the filming of it was, and it just underscores the things that you just said. And yet a lot of people in this country said the enemy of my enemy is my, is my, is my friend. In this particular case, we're talking ISIS. Is that enough for America to continue to embrace Saudi Arabia despite all the negatives that you just laid out? Well, in the short term, in our whack-a-mole program, you, you, you know, it sort of makes sense because al-Qaeda is our immediate threat in our homeland and across the world. But in the long term, we have to abandon that. That made sense in the Cold War when we had a bigger threat with the Soviets and, and the Middle East was sort of a playground of finding the enemy of our enemy. But now, as the Arab Awakening is happening, the liberals on the ground are looking at America as really hypocritical. I mean, to hear the president say that the, the king had the courage of his convictions, well, Come on. I mean, what are those convictions? They are oppressive. They are evil. And we need to call a spade a spade. If we're not going to be hypocrites about religious freedom and about the principles that we supposedly defend in America, and if you want to counter-radicalize, prevent what's happening in Yemen and, and all across the Middle East, we can't continue to embrace the enemy of our enemy because we don't have the same allies as the Saudis. Well, speaking of that, though, we, it seems like our pool of allies are shrinking every single day. And it does put us in a precarious situation, at least to your point near term. Iran now with this intercontinental ballistic missile. Who knows how far it can go? I mean, certainly it can hit almost any country in Europe and maybe one day even going across, you know, into our shores. Israel alone can't be the only, only friend that we have there, even if we've got to look the way at certain indiscretions. Or whatever happened to the idea of maybe some backdoor diplomacy? Hey, the new crew in Saudi Arabia, the younger, more educated, a lot of them have gone to Western schools. Maybe the idea that let women start driving cars, eventually let women start to vote, stop beheading people in the middle of the street. You think we can let those two things live at the same time? Well, this is why daily, weekly, the president needs to utter from his lips the names of prisoners of conscience like Rafe Bedoui, who's being whipped, and other prisoners who really, once we start uttering them, just like Reagan uttered the name of Natan Sharansky and others, and we call the Soviets the evil empire, yes, we can work with them when we have short-term similar goals against al-Qaeda and others, but these oppressive regimes are producing the radicals and saying they're victims of al-Qaeda, all the while they fuel every barrel that they sell radicalizes Muslims in their homes and across the planet. And if we're going to change that paradigm, we need to start to have a strategy against jihad globally, which is the advancement of liberty. And places like Yemen will deteriorate, and, and the Middle East will divide, Charles, into a, a sectarian battle between two sides of the same coin, radical Islamism from the Shiites in Iran and radical Sunni Islam from al-Qaeda, Hamas, and ISIS. Then what is the what is the answer, Zudi? Because I mean, if we if we go if we if we follow what you just said, essentially what we're talking about is it goes all the way back to the death of Muhammad, and who's going to be the heir apparent, and which which religion is real, which one isn't, and as long as the other one is an infidel or, or a false religion, this never stops. Well, this is why we need 
a leader of the free world and in Europe, free world leaders to look at the lens of history today, where we are, not where they think we are on Mars. The State of the Union was sadly missing of what's really happening. Islam today is at a state really where the West was in the 16th, 17th, and 18th century when they were rejecting theocracy. And we have an opportunity now, Charles, with the Arab awakening in Egypt. Nobody's talking about how Tunisia actually voted out right. Islamists and now have a secular democratic party there. If we want to see Islam modernize against theocracy, be it Shiite or Sunni theocrats, we have to start empowering on the ground the green revolutions in Iran and the movements of freedom in all of these countries and say it on a daily basis, and we really aren't doing that. Zudi, I'm glad we have your voice, and uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, Tunisia, the birthplace of the Arab Spring, I think it's been amazing myself. I'm glad you came on to, to share your thoughts with us, and we'll have you back again real soon. Thanks.